Hey guys, in this video we're going to be trying out something called Atuin, which is named after some kind of fictional character, so that's how you pronounce it I think. I don't know anything about it, I know it's some kind of shell, and we're going to try and install it, and use it, and see what kind of cool things we can do. So the idea of this type of video is to just try out new technologies, and sort of share that experience with you guys. Uh, the closest one I've got so far is probably this one, where we tried Linode one click deploy for the first time. So yeah, if you want to see more of this type of video, please leave a like, and subscribe, and all that stuff, and in the comments, Please suggest any technologies that you want me to try out. I'm more than happy to try them. So firstly, what is it and what do we get? I can see there's a little sort of GIF here, which seems to just be showing us how we would interact with this tool. Uh, the tagline, of course, is sync, search and backup shell history with Aturin. So that's sort of the high level concept. And what features have we got? So sync your shell history to all your machines, wherever they are. All data is encrypted and can only be read by you. Efficient search. So search decades of shell history and recall it in an instant. Atuin offers configurable full text of fuzzy search, filterable by host, directory, etc. Uh, open source. Nice. Bring your existing history with you. Atuin supports importing from a wide variety of formats. That's quite nice. Store extra context with your commands, working directory, exit code, and more. So run the install script. Register. This is optional and then search. So control R is something I use quite often. If you've seen my Django videos, you'll probably see me use it quite often. The one thing that's not immediately obvious is how to install it on Windows. Now I've got WSL, so I'm probably going to end up trying that. But if we click on get started and open the docs, yeah, I don't think there's any sort of Windows specific ways on how to install it. So we're just going to have to run this bash script. Cool, so I'm going to open a WSL terminal, which I've got to open default, it's Ubuntu. And just before I run that command, I think we should read through some of this quickly. So a Turin replaces your existing shell history with an SQL light database. That's quite interesting. And records additional context for your commands. With this context, a Turin gives you faster and better search of your shell history. Okay, so that's what's going on. Additionally, a Turin, optionally, syncs your shell history between all of your machines. I will probably not do that just yet because I don't really have a need to yet, but it's probably a good idea um, if you're using multiple machines. You may use either the server I host or host your own, or just don't sync at all. There's all history sync is encrypted i couldn't access your data even if i wanted to and i really don't want to <laughs> here's our support shells and here's our quick start so let's grab this uh please do try and read this guide but if you're in a hurry and want to get started quickly do this okay should we just start with the full guide then cool let's grab this and then the script will install the binary and attempt to configure your shell Aturin uses a shell plugin to ensure that we capture new shell history for old history you will need to import it okay um, this will import history from your current shell. Okay, I guess we run this command. Nice. Put my password in. Okay, looks like that worked. Run this command. Detected bash, importing history from bash, import complete. Lovely. Okay, so at this point we've got a two in storing and searching in your shell history, but it isn't syncing anything. But I don't think we care about that just yet. Um, first sync, syncing additional machines, don't care. Opt into activity graph. Alongside the hosted to and server, there's also a service which generates activity graphs for your shell history. So I think you'd have to be uh, registered to do this, which we won't do just yet. So should we see what it looks like? If we do control R, okay, so that doesn't look any different. Uh, what I'm going to do is open a new tab actually, and then try it. Okay, so that's actually much better. So here we can actually see a whole list of commands that we have been using recently. That's actually really nice, and it even tells us how, I'm guessing, how long it took to get it and when we last used it. Um, although I'm not sure if these are correct, but... Oh, I guess this is when we would have imported it. So yeah, so that's, that's what that is. So we've got it set up, and we know it's now working. So I guess we want to go on to key binding, and I see there's a few things we can actually do. So it seems we can do some changes in key bindings, and there's a few shortcuts... There's also a bunch of commands to learn that we will want to learn. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video here because I want to hear from you guys if you want to see more of this. Do you want to see me continue this specific video? Is there any other tools you want me to try out? Um, I would like to do a part two to this, but yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, and I think it could be fun. So yeah, just let me know. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, of course, if you want to see me uh, try more things out.